to the sixth episode of New Mac News. I'm John Newton. And I'm Melanie Kluznick. Thanks for joining us. Today we will talk to different leaders in the New Mac community, learn about different leadership events within the conference, and announce our super fan of the month. Let's get started by introducing you to Catherine Bassardin and Andrea Stewart down at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy, where they organize the Women's Lead Her Ship Symposium, which will take place later this month. Catherine and Andrea, thank you for joining us today. Thank you Thanks for, having, for having, us. having us. Can you tell us about the Women's Leadership Symposium that Coast Guard will host next month? Yeah, so this is our uh, fifth annual event, which we're hosting on Tuesday, January 19th, right here at the Academy. We invite coaches and administrators um, from all over the Northeast for a day-long symposium um, to discuss leadership in athletics. And the day features a keynote address, which will be given by Sandy Barber, who's the uh, athletic director at Penn State. We also have coaches and administrator discussion panels, as well as breakout sessions covering nine different topics. Um, it's a great opportunity to hear from really talented women in our industry and also to network with other professionals in the area. So this was really the brainchild of our athletic director, Tim Fitzpatrick, and five years ago when we started this, he really wanted to do some professional development for our coaches and administrators on our campus. Mm -hmm. We have a large group of volunteer coaches on our campus that are Coast Guard officers that were former Coast Guard athlete, cadet athletes who when they come back here and get stationed here at the academy, a lot of times as a professor, their job is to mentor student, our cadet athletes, our student athletes. So they like to volunteer with their programs and they really are an asset to our programs and we wanted to include them and really help build the bridge with those professors and officers on campus. And this year we are fortunate to have Nancy Stevens, field hockey coach from UConn, Robin Salters, head volleyball coach from University of New Haven, Jill Cook, the head swimming and diving coach from Western Connecticut, and for our admitters panel we have Susan Bassett, the AD from Ithaca, Kelly Mertens, uh, Deputy AD from University of Maryland, and Christine Lothar, who's the Associate AD for, at Assumption. Uh, so registration can be found on our USCGASports.com uh, website. Just click Inside Athletics and then Women's Leadership Symposium, and you'll find the registration form right there. Um, you can email it, fax it, or snail mail it back to us, and we'll sign you up. What a great opportunity for aspiring female athletic administrators. Absolutely. Next, we travel to Wheaton where we were able to check in with President Dennis Hanno, who was the chair of the New Mac President's Council. He talked about his definition of a successful leader. Uh, I'm Daniel Spencer, men's team, uh, class 2016. I'm Sarah Morrow, I'm women's softball, class of 2016. And I'm Dennis Hanno, uh, president of Wheaton College. Uh, so, President Hanno, um, what does it mean to you to be a successful leader? You know, I spent a lot of time uh, thinking about leadership and, and actually even studying it and teaching it and talking about it. So I really do think it starts with you challenging yourself and knowing what it is that you want to achieve and, and what's the best you can possibly do. So then in terms of defining it, I really do think it ends with you and sitting back and saying, did I do the best I could do? Did I have the impact that I wanted to have? Did I achieve the goals that I wanted to have? Um, one of, I teach leadership to high school students all over the world and some of the projects I do and one of the things, the first principle that I start off with is you have to model the way. If you don't have passion and commitment and show others that you have that, why would anybody else ever join you? So, so I think, you know, that's, it, it, leadership in my mind begins and starts with you and it begins and starts with you setting a, a goal and then going after it and inspiring others to join you as you work towards achieving that goal. So. I really agree with that. So what components of the New Mac philosophy do you think contribute to making student athletes successful leaders? Yeah. So, you know, I've been involved with the New Mac for 10 years now, and I think it truly is one of the most unique athletic conferences uh, in the U.S. And, you know, sometimes when you're in it, you don't sit back and think about it, but, you know, there's 11 different institutions, and, and different is the operative word there. You know, when you think about it, you've got schools that focus in business or engineering, you've got women's only schools, you've got schools that have other niches that they've carved out. And so there's almost no one, two schools that are exactly alike, yet uh, we all in the NUMAC share the same philosophy around uh, excellence, integrity, and respect. 
So I think the best thing uh, when I look at what it does for our student athletes here is it shows it shows you that you know there isn't a one size fits all approach to excellence, integrity, and respect. So I find it incredibly exciting that the diversity that you get to experience from playing against athletes with all those different backgrounds and perspectives um, makes you know it a unique opportunity for a student athlete to um, you know really challenge themselves to to compete in this broader pool of uh, of athletes that you know that everybody isn't alike, you know. So I think it's, when I think, you know, I'm sure you were aware of the conference you were getting into when you chose uh, Wheaton, but I I think, you know, I, I challenge you and all of our athletes to reflect, uh, you know, as you're part of something special and unique to, you know, really what the new Mac does stand for. And, you know, we've been, the new Mac's been around for 30 years now, and, uh, and it really is one of those conferences that a lot of other schools aspire to be part of because of what we have is, is pretty special and unique. And I do think at the end of the day, it's about the leadership development of the student athletes at all of the individual schools. And the fact that these 11 schools that have these very different uh, and unique and, and, and all performing at a very high level, um, you know, in so many different dimensions. I mean. Every school in the new Mac has a national reputation of one kind or another. Um, I, I really do think that the new Mac is part of the leadership development that happens on individual campuses, but sometimes the student athletes don't even think about it. Um, but I challenge you to think about that diversity and how all the schools are focused on that same overarching set of goals around uh, excellence, integrity, and respect. We would like to thank our sponsors and all Worldwide Travel for helping us with our travel needs. And Athletic Link for assisting our members with online services during the hiring process. Last month, the conference hosted an NCAA Compliance Summit for coaches, administrators, and Title IX coordinators. Hey everyone, we're here at WPI where the NUMAC is hosting the Compliance Summit. And I'm joined with Kirsten Clark. She is the Associate Athletic Director at Babson. Kirsten, what did you think of today's summit? What are some of your takeaways? Today's summit was great. It was a great opportunity to share ideas with colleagues. It was really enjoyable to hear from Sarah Odie from the NCAA and from Janet Judge. Her keynote speech gave me a lot of ideas to bring back to campus. Hi, I'm Nikki Cahoon. I work at Clark University as women's volleyball and men's tennis coach. I also serve as a compliance assistant for our department. Thanks for coming today, Mickey. So what do you think of the Compliance Summit so far? It's great. I mean, through one session, Sarah did a terrific job. New Mac always provides a real professional environment for us to better ourselves as professionals. And uh, it was fantastic. Look forward to attending the rest of the day. Hi, I'm Kat Ajitsi. I'm the head women's lacrosse coach at Emory College. The summit has been very interesting, very educational so far. Some of the information is, is, is concepts that I am pretty well versed in at this point, but a lot of it is some good discussion, hearing from other schools what they deal with, um, and talking about some of the new legislation, which has been very helpful. My name is Erica Hollett. I am the Athletics Recruiting and Retention Coordinator at Springfield College. And Erica, how do you feel that this summit is going to benefit you as you continue to educate coaches on recruiting rules? I think it's really going to benefit me in working with the coaches. A lot of times they come to me with questions regarding recruiting and compliance um, related issues. So being able to be part of this summit and hear the discussions and the different interpretations um, is, is really going to be beneficial as I help clarify things for the coaches in regards to recruiting moving forward. Hi, my name is Jen Williams. I am the head softball coach and director of strength and conditioning at MIT. Um, so Jen, uh, from the coaching perspective, how do you feel like the Compliance Summit is going to benefit you moving forward? I think that from both perspectives, for both departments that, that I work with, both teams, both softball and strength and conditioning, there's a bunch of different questions that um, are constantly changing and in flux. I think that being educated on kind of the basic things that you need to know uh, is really important, not so much because I expect myself to memorize everything, but because that way I know when to ask questions. So a red flag will go up and say, I need to make sure I actually look this up or clarify it. And something like this really helps me get a bit of perspective on what those red flags are or should be, and then help me figure out how to educate my staff, my assistant coaches in both strength conditioning and softball. Um, and it also just makes you think. I've already 
I, I've, I've only been here for an hour and I've already heard multiple things that have made me realize that I need to ask some different questions to our compliance office. Uh, so I feel like it's something that, uh, that will really benefit both programs going forward to make sure that we're not only compliant but also making sure we're thinking about it from the student athlete's perspective and trying to put um, their protection first. So I'm Aldo Santiago, tennis coach at Mount Holyoke College. This is a great experience for me, even though I have uh, plenty of experience, 23 years at Mount Holyoke. Uh, this summer gave me plenty of reminders, and it gave me a great view at all those new uh, rules that are out there with the NCAA. Hi, my name is Kim Spence, and I coach track and field and cross country at Wheaton College. Uh, so far, the Compliance Summit has been very educational, and I think it's a great opportunity for all the new Mac schools to come together and collaborate. Hi, I'm Tessa Splain. I'm the head rowing coach at Wellesley College and associate professor of the practice. I think my one takeaway is the really big impact that social media can have on our recruiting process and how we need to be really mindful and aware of what's being posted in conjunction with our teams. Uh, Jamie Ginsberg, head field hockey coach, Smith College. Um, and what's your takeaway today from the Compliance Summit, Jamie? I think that the takeaway that I've uh, found most intriguing is that we're all I like that we're all on the same page and that there's a lot of unanswered questions and I think the discussion being friendly and open about the nuances that are gray are, are intriguing to hear people's take and how they're interpreting the rules that um, we all stop and hesitate with. Uh, Chris Parsons, I'm the Associate Athletic Director at the Coast Guard Academy for Compliance. Um, my takeaway from today uh, really stems from Sarah Odie's presentation which um, discuss just continued education for our coaches and also that really if we're doing our jobs properly that we are finding things that we're doing wrong and that we're getting better and learning from those things each and every day. Uh, hi, I'm Cherie Scalasso uh, from WPI and I'm the Associate Athletic Director, Head Women's Basketball Coach and Senior Women's Administrator. Um, I've really enjoyed the Compliance Summit today that the new Max put on. Um, my, you know, for me, great takeaways today from the other coaches that I got to sit at the roundtable discussions from. Obviously, the information that Sarah presented was terrific, but just to actually listen to other people give specific examples of what they um, have done on their campuses or some specific you know, things that worked for them, that was really great for, for me and for other members of our staff. And I think, you know, same with Janet. She, Janet Judge does such a great job of really kind of telling you like it is and giving you some specific things that you can um, you know, look at and it makes it kind of real for you. So it's not just words on a paper. Um, and I think some of those things really hit home for us today. So. I'm joined here with Sarah Odie from the NCAA offices, our main speaker talking with our coaches and our administrators about compliance. How has your day been here at WPI, Sarah? Thanks, Jen. Um, it's actually really rare that our NCAA staff has the opportunity to interact with coaches. Most often we're dealing with athletics directors or compliance administrators. So it's really interesting for me to hear and probably important for me to hear about some of the issues that are of concern to coaches and some of the issues that are creating confusion for some of our coaches. So that was a lot of fun for me this morning. Um, hopefully I didn't ruffle their feathers too much. Um, and then, as always, I continue to be impressed with the, um, just the compliance uh, steps that the new Mac has always taken. Patrick's done a great job ensuring compliance at the conference level and at the institutional levels. And so I had a good afternoon with the compliance administrators as well, talking through some best practices, some processes for handling uh, difficult compliance issues, and then talking through uh, some best practices for using LSDBI and RSRO as well. Great. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. The keynote speaker of the event was attorney Janet Judge, who is the president of Sports Law Associates. Ms. Judge specializes in NCAA legislation, Title IX policy, and works nationwide training administrators, staff, and student athletes on both subjects. I know Ms. Judge helped to make the summit a success, and the new MAC is looking forward to working with her in the future. One of the newest leaders to the new MAC conference is Smith's athletic director, Kristen Hughes, who settled in Northampton at the end of July. We checked in to ask how it was going so far. Hi, my name is Tia Karapoulios, and I'm a senior captain on the basketball team. Hi, and I'm Casey Rao, and I'm the captain of the field hockey team. And we're here with Kristen Hughes, the director of athletics and recreation since July. And Kristen, how would you describe your leadership role since you've been at Smith? Well, I think there's a, 
probably a number of facets that come when you're leading an athletic department and certainly leading one in a place like Smith College um, I think carries a significant responsibility. I think being um, a leader in women's athletics um, and trying to promote all those ideals that come with that um, is a huge responsibility and that's really what got me the most excited about this position. Excellent. And how do you think your role it lines up with the college's mission statement? Well, I think the you know Smith College is all about um, not only educating women, but really preparing them to be leaders in the world. And I think if you look at characteristics that um, businesses look for and the kinds of people that they want to hire, many of those characteristics come from what you learn in being an athlete. So I think that we really go hand in hand with what Smith College is trying to accomplish. And I think if you look at the athletes that have graduated from Smith and you see how successful they are in their personal lives, their professional lives, um, it's a pretty impressive group. So what things have you done in the past 90 days of being here to <laughs> go along with that? Wow, it's been only 90 days. It <laughs> feels like a lot longer, and I mean that in a good way. Um, you know, I think that the, the, the biggest goal so far has really been trying to get to know all the people that um, I'm working with, whether it's our coaches or um, the athletes on our teams, and really trying to find out not only um, what my vision is, but what the vision is of our student athletes. Um, and one thing that I've said, I think, to you guys a lot is it's your experience. And so we really want to keep that in mind and hopefully we're building a culture and programs here that really embody everything that you guys want as student athletes. Yeah. Um, so kind of with like the NUMAC side of things, um, what kind of competitive environment does the NUMAC bring to Smith student athletes? Well, hopefully it'll bring us NUMAC championships. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, we got a lot of a lot of uh, budget money for banners and <laughs> championship <laughs> trophies, so that's a good thing. But I think, you know, the great thing about being a part of a conference like the NUMAC is it really embraces not only what we're doing athletically, but what we're doing academically. And so when you're a part of, uh, of schools that really embody those ideals, um, it's just a really neat association to be a part of. And it really brings significance when you win a championship because you know that you're you know, beating out some of the top schools in the country. So that's kind of a new thing. Yeah. Well, Kristen, thank you for sitting down with us, and we're excited for everything that Smith Athletics has. Me too. Look Me too. To. Thank you. Yeah. Go Pioneers. <laughs> <laughs> to close our show, we will leave you with an example of superior sportsmanship and announce our new Mac Super Fan of the Month. Congratulations to Peter Wiggins and Robert Stevens of Wheaton College. The Wheaton Athletic Community feels lucky to have Peter and Robert as their team's biggest supporters. Peter and Robert attend almost every volleyball, basketball, and softball game hosted by Wheaton Athletics. They are known and appreciated by all the coaches and athletes and have taken their support to the next level with their YouTube channel on which they post game film with commentary. Sportsmanship is a key component of the new Mac philosophy and it is clear that Peter and Robert take part in the cultivation of an enjoyable sporting environment with their constant positivity and support for Wheaton Athletic teams. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you tune in next month when we will talk to some of our alums as we celebrate the pride of Newmac. I'm John Newton. And I'm Melanie Kluznik. See you next time.